Tonight, I am drinking a fat tire beer. I highly recommend you grab a beer for my subject. <laughs> This is crazy, maybe I need to see a psychologist because I'm excited to talk about this even though this is a very doom and gloom subject because we're going to talk about economics. So if you've never been to East Metro before, I always start my segment out with an update on the national debt, okay? So let's take a look at where we're at today and the three most important figures. We are standing right now at the statutory debt limit, I meaning Congress cannot borrow any more money until they prove uh, an increase in the debt ceiling at $16.7 trillion. We also just had the end of the fiscal year end with an $823 billion budget deficit. The monetary base right now stands at $3.55 trillion. That's all the cash flowing around in our economy. And to put that in perspective, that's $100 billion more than it was last month. Okay, the subject for tonight is the continuing resolution and this whole budget debate. Now, if you got a beer, put it up in the air. Cheers to me. Pray to God. That's why we do this right after the prayer, because I need some strength here, all right? Let's have a drink. I'm so excited about this. Thought about it long and hard today. Okay. As usual, I've got a stress ball. Throw your hand up in the air, and it will... I will throw this stress ball to you if you need it at any point during this presentation because this stuff is terrible. It's hard to listen to and it's going to bore little Gabby to death, but it's very, very important to listen to. So, let's start it off tonight, the discussion, with what the founders thought. So, what did Federalist 58 say? Well, James Madison said the House representatives can not only refuse, but they alone can propose the supplies requisite for the supported government. They, in a word, this is key, they, in a word, hold the purse, that power, powerful instrument by which we behold. The purse. Who holds the power of the purse? Congress, the House of Representatives. That's very, very important. So what are we hearing this week from Barack Obama and Senator Harry Reid? What are we hearing this week? The Republicans lost the election, right? They have no, no chip in this, art, this, this negotiation or this uh, debate. They lost the election, we won the election. Did they really lose the election? Did we really lose the election? Let's look at where these power structures in Washington DC right now. 2012, more Republicans were elected to the House of Representatives than Democrats. Do you realize that? More people, who holds the power of the purse? Congress, the House of Representatives, 232 to 200. When you add the numbers of the Senate and the Office of the Presidency, there are more Republican elected officials in Washington, D.C. than there are Democrats. Who won the election in 2012? I think the American people spoke. Those Republicans ran on an issue. Get rid of Obamacare. It's destroying jobs. And let's get this fiscal house in order. At least that's what they ran on. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is very important to know. There are more elected Republicans in Washington, D.C. than there are Democrats. Okay, let's take a look at the federal budget. Oh, actually, before we get started on this next slide, when we talk about federal budgets, if you're not familiar, the fiscal year, as we refer to it, starts in, on October 1st. And that runs through September 30th of next year. So even though we are calendar year 2013, we are now in fiscal year 2014. Just want to make that clear up front because it can be a little confusing as we go on. All right, let's take a look at where we ended up on September 30, fiscal year 2013 with the federal budget. $613 billion was spent on defense, $853 billion on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security was $806 billion, the net interest on the debt came in at $258 billion, and about a trillion dollars for the federal budget. Take notes, by the way, because this might show up later on the who wants to be a millionaire. Okay, now those are preliminary figures right now. The uh, government is on a shutdown at this point. But let's explain real quick. That in the aggregate is $3.6 trillion. That's all the expenses, all the expenditures, the outlays of the federal government, $3.6 trillion in fiscal year 2013. And in the aggregate, all the money that came into the treasury, 
equated to $2.8 trillion. And if you're a math person, that's an $800 billion budget deficit, which we just covered. The federal government, once again, overspent money. Luckily, it was under a trillion dollars for the first time in five years, but it was still the tune of $800 billion. What is that like? It's like 20 times the biennium budget of Minnesota. So let's just put that in perspective. Now, when we talk about the budget process in Washington, D.C., we break, we break the budget or the programs down into a couple categories. And for simplicity's sakes, I'm going to use four different categories. On the right side, we're just going to ignore this because the postal system and the U.S. Mint are self-financed, although we all know in here that the postal system is pretty much broke. But for, the, for, the, for, pra for practical terms here, let's just say those are self-financed and they're not part of this budget discussion. So what we have are four different types of programs. We have mandatory programs. That includes Social Security, Medicare. It includes Obamacare. That means those are programs that are written in law and each year they're not up for a dis or a appropriations bill. It means that they actually have some kind of funding source attached to it. Even though Obamacare isn't supposed to have taxes, right? Okay, then we have something called defense. Now technically that's discretionary, but the most important role for the federal government is to protect the nation, right? So we have to have a defense budget. And fortunately, this government shutdown does not apply to defense because that was passed. And so we are fully funding our national defense right now. And our troops are funded and our nation is protected as far as the DOD budget goes. Then you have a budget item called non-defense discretionary. And that's where the majority of this debate is. And this is the funding for all the agencies of the federal government. And on a couple slides in the future, I'll show you all those broken down. And then last but not least, you have the interest expense. And that's important to, to distinguish that because we're always told we're going to default on the debt. And that's a bold-faced lie. So we have plenty of revenue because on the next slide, I'm going to show you how much of an expense that is each year. So if we look at the mandatory spending, all those entitlement programs, we spend about $2.2 trillion in fiscal year 2013 and we're projecting about a 5% increase in 2014. Stress ball? <laughs> Defense. A very small increase planned right now, uh, going from 613 to $615 billion. So where the real debate is coming down to now is the non-defense discretionary. Because we no longer, or because the Congress couldn't pass an appropriations bill for those programs, they are not being funded right now. And that equated to $557 billion in fiscal year 2013. So there's big question marks behind it because now we are seeing what Congress is gonna do about that line item. There's also question marks behind the $258 billion because as you've seen, we keep adding more money to the debt. Has anyone noticed what's going on with interest rates recently? Starting to go up? That affects this expense item. And so we don't know where that could be, but that could be significantly larger. And that's a very, very important subject we'll get to in a future meeting. Actually, I talked about it a little bit last time. Okay, so on this next slide, this is a hard graphic to see, but this is the breakdown of that non-discretionary spending, or non-defense non discretionary spending. On the top is Health and Human Services, $81 billion. Edu Department of Education, Veterans Affairs, the State Department, which is how we fund Egypt, our, our aid to Egypt and countries like that, all the way down to the EPA. You'll see Social Security on there, that's administrative costs, it's not the benefits part, which would be enormous compared to all the rest of these. So that's essentially what this debate is right now, is all these agencies of the federal government and how they're going to be funded going forward. Now, here's the discretionary budget process in Washington, D.C. The President of the United States, by law, owes a budget to the, uh, the Congress by February. He has been late, I think every year, if not the majority of the years, he's been in office. He is late on that law that he is supposed to provide a bill to Congress. But anyhow, Congress then has an ability, or has the, uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
They're supposed to, from about May on to September, they're supposed to have budget, budget resolutions. They pass their dream budget. And those re resolutions go into conference. Then the 12 subcommittees, which oversee these programs, these uh, different agencies, are supposed to pass their appropriations bills, which is then voted on in the House and Senate, and it goes back to conference. The final bill passes either the House and the Senate together, and then the President signs. And I can sum it all up here in this next slide, right there. Okay, it is kind of complex, right? I mean, budgetary uh, debate is very boring. I understand that the process is very boring. But needless to say, is this not their job out there in Washington, D.C.? Do you know what happens when they don't do their job? They get a raise. They get a raise. <laughs> very smart crowd. They do get a raise, and they don't likely get fired. They have this thing called continuing resolutions. Have you heard of that? Continuing resolution CRs? This is basically Congress not being able, go to the next slide there, Kurt. This is Congress not being able to pass appropriations bills, coming to an agreement on it. So what they say is, we're just gonna pass a bill that says, fund the government at its current level, or a little bit more, or a little less, or with this caveat. That's a continuing resolution. And that's what we've operated a lot on more recently, but actually quite a bit uh, through the last decade or so. This is like saying, you and your wife are having this conversation and uh, you're like, how are we gonna spend our money in October? And you can't agree on it. And so what ends up happening is you say, well, let's just do what we did in September and continue on. But guess what? You guys are fiscally responsible, right? They're not. They're out spend, overspending by almost a trillion dollars a year. So them doing the continuing resolutions are already disastrous for our nation. So that's what we're operating on, is continuing resolutions, and the current one came to a conclusion on September 30th, at the, 30th, at the end of the fiscal year, and so now the debate came back to the end about what do we do going forward, and they obviously can't agree on appropriations bills. So, this is the debate that we're told, and I put that in quotation marks for very serious reasons, because what are the Democrats saying? Well, let's, current, let's pass current CRs, continuing resolutions, at their rates, fully fund Obamacare, don't want to touch the entitlement programs because that's what they believe in. And guess what? This is all they're gonna pay for. They're gonna tax the rich, which everyone that's gonna buy Obamacare isn't really necessarily rich, but that's, their, that's what their talking point is. They're gonna tax more, they're gonna borrow more money, and then they're gonna to go to their buddies at the Federal Reserve and they're gonna say, print more money so you can buy some of, the, uh, of our debt so we can keep this, uh, this whole system going. And if that sounds fishy and it sounds like it's not gonna work, you're pretty astute. It ain't gonna work that much longer. So what do the Republicans say in this debate? The Republicans supposedly are talking like us, the fiscal conservatives, right? There's a fiscal conservative alternative to the Democrats. So they're talking like us, but what do they do? They end up going over and saying, well, we're gonna just do what the Democrats do, we're gonna pass a continuing resolution. And we already heard tonight I can't remember who said that. Uh, Bad. Eric Paulson, congressman in CD3, is already planning on caving on this issue and giving up the continu and, and caving in and, and funding the government at its current level, which is already overspending by $800 billion. That would be finding the stressful. <laughs> Randy, I've got it right there for you. Now, how do you pay for that? Well, Republicans, for the most part, don't want more taxes. Thank God, all right, for the most part. However, they're fine borrowing money, which makes people Gabby's age know they got a big liability coming ahead of them. She looked up from that book, that's funny. And they're fine with the Federal Reserve monetizing some of that debt. So here comes the tea party, right? This is where the real actual debate exists. There's some tactical debate here on how we handle this problem, but guess what guys? I bet I could ask this whole room. Anyone think that government should shrink yeah, right? We should probably not have government at its current level. It should probably be limited in its size and scope. That's the Tea Party. We're saying they're too intrusive. Now, listen, I truly believe we can actually get rid of, a, well, I, I want to get rid of Obamacare. It's a job killer. It's, it's bringing on the 30-hour work week. It's an invasion of privacy. It's a horrible thing, but we have leverage. 
How many elected Republicans are there than Democrats? More, right? Yep. Right? Did, yes. Is that not the power of the purse? Do we not have a good part in this negotiation? And when it comes to the funding of this, it's not applicable with the Tea Party because we're saying, guess what? Less government. We don't need to tax more. We don't need to borrow more. And we certainly don't need to monetize this debt by the Federal Reserve, by the Treasuries. Now, if we don't act, if we don't act, well, that's another $800 billion to the federal debt, okay? Right now, as it stands, remember, there are about $557 billion of our federal budget right now, because this is really a partial shutdown, it's only about $557 billion of the $3.6 trillion. Is, if this gridlock went out through the whole, the whole fiscal year, we would have saved $557 billion which we would still be running a budget deficit. That's how screwed up it is. But needless to say, technically right now, without giving $9 billion to the EPA, we are saving money. Now, I would love to see Veterans Affairs funded and many other programs, so I'm not, I'm not saying that this is the greatest way to go about it, but technically, we are cutting spinning right now by this course of action. So if Obama and Harry Reid want to open up the government, they have to give up something and stop with this nonsense of not negotiating with us. The other thing is, I want to show a hands of anyone in this room that can name an entitlement program that's passed Congress and been signed by the President that's ever been repealed. Show hands. Anyone know one? No? No hands? This is why you have to fight it. I've heard a lot of people say, well, let's just let Obamacare be fully implemented and everyone will see how disaster it is. Yeah, like Medicare? The thing that's leading to the biggest budget deficit in our future? Folks, this thing is causing incredible harm right now to our, uh, I mean, it's basically taking away the privatization of a whole industry. It's taxing our people. It's making all of you that are in the private sector, it's making your uh, premiums go up by your employer. It's disastrous. And if we don't act now, if we don't stand firm on this, then guess what? We lose big time and we will never get this fiscal house in order. Because you know what's up next? What's up next is that debt ceiling debate. And that's even more crucial. And I know Jason Lewis this week, he really ticked me off, but that's fine. Because we agree on the size of government, okay? We, we agree on the philosophy, but he, he thinks this is where the debate goes. And I'm saying this is a stepping stone because this is the real one. Do you know what happens if, if Congress doesn't pass... Uh, an increase in the debt ceiling? It automatically bounces the budget. They can't, they can't borrow more money. Problem solved, right? Mm, no. I mean, it's painful, but eventually, at some point, we have to start getting to this point where we say, listen, we, have, we it's going to get to that point, guys. The interest rates go up, we keep adding on trillions of dollars to our federal debt, and you, you talk about pain, that would be more painful than it is if we fight right now on this issue. Who has the power of the purse? The House of Representatives. Are there more Republicans or more Democrats right now elected to offices in Washington, D.C.? Republicans. Republicans. Okay, I made my spiel. <laughs> Jack's got a wireless mic. Now, this is unique, we don't always do this. I usually stand up here and preach and you guys just are subjects and have to listen and agree. <laughs> But no, let's have a discussion here. We got a guy over here, Jack, if you want to head over here. Let's have a nice discussion for the next 15 minutes or so. Raise your hand again, where were you? For or against, doesn't matter. Can I talk into this thing here? Well, you can. Now, I am 72 years old and old retired curmudgeon here. I've been through this country for many, many years. I've never seen it as bad as we have it right now. The Tea Party has to get behind cutting back this government. They're taking everything from us and giving nothing back. My, uh, 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 sorry, my uh, Medicare just got that back. I can't get a blood test for over a year. I used to get them every six months. Now my doctor can't do it. And that's what's happening with this Obamacare. It's cutting into everything that we've worked for for all the years. I'm drawing Social Security and I'm drawing Medicare. I paid for it. I paid for it all through the years. And they're cutting us. The Tea Party is the only hope that we have, I think, right now. 
the Democrats are absolutely hopeless, and the Republicans are not very good either. I used to belong to the Republican Party like right they came here. It's time that we have to back up what we have worked for all these years and keep it going for the people in this country, not for the politicians. They don't listen to us anymore. I've said enough. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Walter? Jack Dave Walter over there in the weather coat. So, Jack, you'll hear a lot of liberals saying that. That's Jake. Jake. Yes, Nate. You'll hear a lot of liberals saying that shutting down the government actually is costing us money. How long does the government have to be shut down before us actually start uh, gaining money back from the shutdown? <laughs> What's the rationale on that, by the way? Do you know? No, I'm just asking a question. Do you know what the rationale is on, on it's costing us money? That, what's that? So that we don't do it? So you're saying that they're lying? <laughs> No. You know, one of the most interesting things that I watch in this debate is they say we're going to default on the debt if we don't pass the debt ceiling increase, right? I mean, really, we have to get to this point where we say these guys are lying to us. I don't know why that's so hard to say out in Washington. They feel like, I feel like the opposition party here, the, you know, I guess it's the Republicans to the power structure, because they let them, is... Uh, we can't call these people liars. I don't know why that is. They're lying. When you talk about defaulting on the debt, that's a lie. We have $258 billion that is required to pay the interest on the debt in an annual budget. We take in $3.6 trillion. There's enough money to pay our debt. It's a lie. So, you know, stuff like that, um, I am sure, I don't know what the numbers are. I'm sure there's a week or two or something like that. There's a cost, and I'm sure that uh, there will be a lot of negotiations about back pay for some of these people, but generally speaking, right now, if they're not funded and it never uh, changes, then what, are you getting the time? Jake, we don't have all day here. All right, go ahead, Jake. We have another question. I asked my husband this on the way here. We were talking about everything that's going on, and I said, how come Obama and his team are eight to 10 steps ahead of the Republicans all the time? The Republicans are supposed to be informed, intelligent people, and it seems like he is eight to ten steps of the, like, ahead of us all the time. And one of the things I want to cite is I understand there's not food in the commissaries. And, you know, that didn't happen today. That had to be planned out very, uh, in, what's it, very in, methodically and very intentionally to inflict pain. For that, to inflict pain. And it really ticks me off that he always goes after threatening and, um, well, I know he lies like a drug, but the threatening and the fear. He wants to put fear in people. But I don't understand why the, the Republican Party is always eight to ten steps behind this guy. If we're not that, I can't believe people are that stupid in the Republican Party. You know, I don't want to address that if it's to me or open up a discussion, but my thought about it is, if your target is the next election, then yeah, maybe you're right about that, but if your target is to limit the size of government, which is why I elected these people, I don't think they're eight to ten steps behind, I think they're old and firm. Walter in the back. Oh, by the way, on, on your discussion on the commissary, I know a lot of uh, the military uh, is supported in the defects by uh, civilian contractors, so I would imagine they're not getting paid, they're not going to have staff patients. I think a better question, though, is why are, why are there barricades at the World War II Memorial? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's not like you need people staff for that. More guards. More guards. So, uh, I won't say I'm going to play devil's advocate, but I'll play Jason Lewis advocate. You were on Jason's side. Are you Are you not anymore? I, I am unconvinced to the soundness of the strategy. That. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to uh, just one, one of the issues that I had, and I'd, I'd love you to address it. Uh, what do you say to the critique that points out that 80% uh, of the funding for Obamacare is hardwired into statute, 
And Obamacare, as we know, as we've seen, is, is being rolled out right now in spite of the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not dependent upon a continuing resolution, otherwise it would not be happening. Uh, and only 20% of the discretionary spending and, and subject to potential concessions by the Senate and the President. Um, doesn't that indicate that we can't actually stop Obamacare with this strategy? No, it doesn't, but I, I, and then I think I was very clear on this. Obamacare is part of the mandatory spending, so technically it is still operating. Well, actually, it's not really operating. The exchanges aren't doing too well. <laughs> but that's not because of lack of funding. So Walter brings up a good point. Technically, they're not cutting off the funding from Obamacare, in it, but what you can do is when you have the negotiation, because for some reason, the Democrats need their EPA and they need their funding for Egypt and all those other programs. And this is a bargaining chip for us and say, if you want these programs funded, then you've got to give something up. Now, this is a real debate, Walter, and this is why I think Jason Lewis doesn't see it the same way as I do. Are you just going to go after Obamacare or are you going to go after all spending? And I'm all for cutting across the board. But I'll tell you this much. If we don't cut Obamacare now, if we don't find a way to repeal Obamacare, or delay it at least, which is really what the Republicans did, they even, they even negotiated and, and came back with another bill. But if you don't repeal it now, it will never happen. It will be the law of the land, and welcome the 30-hour work week. Over there. Not a financial one, but I'm wondering if I can, uh, What's your credit card company to my maxed out card and tell them to raise my debt limits so I can pay my debt? There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple for me. And I, I understand uh, you know, this, that uh, we should go beyond the Obama care thing, but the fact of the matter is that they want, they, they're, the Democrats are setting everything and rejecting everything now so they can get Obamacare, and then we have will talk about the debt ceiling. The problem is, that the only compromise Democrats understand or accept is if you agree with them. And unfortunately, too many Republicans are uh, wishy-washy and will cave, and they'll get that too. And that's why I, am, I no longer identify as a Republican because as I've been saying, not quite as gently as this, that uh, there's no reason why I should vote for a donkey that's dressed like an elephant. There you go. Okay, so um, we're running out of time here, but okay, the guy over there. Well, it's, in, it's interesting that Obamacare is part of mandatory spending, and yet the Veterans Department, Veterans Affairs, that takes care of all of our veterans from various war periods, is part of discretionary spending. I think part of the answer to what the lady said over there while ago is why does it seem like Republicans are 10 steps behind the president, partially has to do with the mainstream media. That's right. Uh, that is a big, big problem for Republicans and conservatives. And even on Fox News last night, here's something interesting. Fox News last night, the most, probably the most conservative news organization there is, had a piece on there talking about the daily loss to the economy over this government shutdown is now estimated at about $300 million a day. And that's supposed to be a real big problem to our economy. But remember, what they even forget to say is that this is tax money that is not being spent on our economy. Now in 96... Well, they're still collecting it. Yeah, still right. The in 96, the last government shutdown under... Clinton was 28 days, yeah. but they we had a lot more robust economy back in '96 than we do now, which is it's hurting us quite a bit. All right, we got to close it out, but I want to ask one question here. Does everyone agree at least that the debate's not really what is perceived by the media? The real debate is like what's happening in here, the tactics, and how we limit the size of government. Right? We all agree on that, right? Well, that's the Tea Party debate. We actually want to limit the size of government. The establishments and both parties think different. But I want to just show our hands real quick. I think most of you understand what Ted Cruz is doing. Who supported Ted Cruz's effort? Show hands. Okay. That's a pretty good amount in here, but that's not everybody. So I think it's good we have these debates inside the Tea Party because at least our target is to limit the size of government. 
And uh, is there a hand in here that doesn't think we should defund Obamacare if we had a chance? Okay, that's what I thought. All right. <laughs> I've taken up a lot of time. Very good conversation. Take this with you. Educate and enlighten someone else that might be... Don't worry about those far leftists, but worry about someone that's on the moderate and maybe just getting interested in this debate and enlighten them and bring them here next month. Okay. I, I am... Oh, well, let me go through real quick here. Uh, I'm probably going to write about this on my website. So if you want to go to JD Funds, I'll probably write something about this. And then next slide is the reading list. And Craig's going to cover this later. Uh, we have this contest. If you read uh, the five books that are on each one of our list, you can win Zimbabwe tr trillion dollars, a hundred trillion, or you can win a silver coin. Um, but anyhow, that's my reading list up there if you uh, could... Um, to some of those questions. Okay, 